So now we're getting ready to put the pretty much final layer of fur on our, on our furry friend here. Um, this is what we've got so far. As you can tell, we've got the, the whole lay of the dog's um, configuration here. Got it all kind of stated, got the eyes there. What we want to do is get the fur finished up, get the final highlights um, anywhere else that we need to put them uh, to make sure everything's nice and wet, and, um, and then we'll be finished. So I'm going to go ahead and put this upside down again because it's just making for a, a much better flow. I'm also going to add just a little bit of acrylic retarder to um, my paint because the, the acrylic really does have a tendency to dry fairly quickly. So, and this will just make it easier for me as I'm applying the paint to the, to the dog. Oh, that'll be much, much better. So, um, and of course you can continue to add water to this, but it just won't have quite the drying time uh, that, it, that acrylic does as it is alone. So, let's, I'm going to start on the, on the head and then we'll kind of go from there. I just want to take some of this off. So let's actually start over here on the ear. And now we're just going to start. This is the, the top layer of the fur. And we're just going to put this in. A golden retriever's ear is very soft and very velvety. Uh, actually, I need a couple of shades of this. Just want to have it nearby. Not the touch of that retarder. Because this is where I really want it to go just a little bit faster and I really want to kind of do a little more blending, I think. Ah. So let's see. Let's get back into that squint mode and just coming in here to the ear, around the edge of the ear. Now you can come in with thicker paint and anywhere that you want it highlighted, you can do that. But right now we're just going to get, we're concerned about texture and direction and the top layers of the fur. So, Once again, back to this number three brush. And just bring it on up the side of the head. Oh, and what's really cool is there's some lighter hair that's kind of overlapping that. And we're going to show that. I'm going to go to the other ear, just kind of. work our way in with that. And now let's do some, we're going to move into kind of over all of this, tighten it up a little bit. Around the tongue. I think I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush. Let's go up to a 12. A little softer, too. Once again, keep the this direction of the hair in mind because it'll save you time having to, to redirect what you're doing later, kind of. Now we're going to start kind of blending it in and melding the, the hair from the head into the body to come around the base of the mouth. It's a good color and good consistency. So continue to follow around the... Now it's a little hairier here, so we want those, those hairs to kind of stick in and out of the surrounding areas. 
and And this is just going to smooth it all and pull it all together. And we've got this coming in on this side and pull it in up underneath the nose. Keep it real crisp around the nose. Right in here and now this I just kind of, I'm going to lift some of that because I really like that dark area there. That's where the whiskers are going to grow out of. And so we're coming in with a slightly lighter shade, lighter color. And then the final light will be where we have the overlapping hair, fur. All right, so we're coming up to the eye. Just build. Build the shape. Put a little bit of that light color in there because they're really starting to get light now. And pull it around. Just, ooh, get some good, strong strokes in now because we know more about where we're going. I'm going to pull one over here. And let's see, a little bit here. Just go back over. Just doing some comparison. Up in here. Okay, let's go back over to the muzzle. Make this a little bit lighter. And we're going to go in and put some hair in that area. Pull it on up. Oop, got to add a little more water. Now let's go around the muzzle, pull it in here, keep your point so that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Let's get some light in here. Go up underneath the nose, uh, get my point back again. And, oh good, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay, let's get the light area of, of the ear in, and where it's going to come off. So what we'll do before we add the final highlights to the ear, to the ears and around the face, is go ahead and finish up the, the background so that we can get that light hair um, to show up real well next to the blue. So we're gonna work around the muzzle here and just follow the form, follow the form because that's gonna tell you. It's very difficult for people a lot of times to make the nose or the eyes right because they're not really looking at the the overall shape so they're just assuming where things are going to be but you have to watch and see where the how the face or the the head undulates with the colors and go back over here so right now I'm just kinda as quickly as possible because I don't want to belabor any point or any place um, if I second guess myself, um, I might be trying to read more into it than what's really there. Now I'm going to go as close to the eyes as I can and then I'm going to go to a smaller brush. So we're coming around the eye here and about ready for that smaller brush real soon. Let's see the middle of the head got this coming down and got this coming down whatever this and that is and this goes around the top of the head because they have that wonderful little separation on their heads and this light area here 
and it's coming up like so. And this is going to be really light. So now let me get a smaller brush. I think I'm going to do a number three. Working with the same basic colors, I'm going to come in and And the more you, you do, the more, the more you uh, look at the modeling, and the farther along you get, the more you see, which is just natural. But as you can see, the, the paint is really going on much more opaquely, and so that's what we want to have happen. Now let's go around the eyes. So we have the, the lid, like so. And then we have this area coming in. So, and then the bottom area. Just talk yourself through it. That's the best way to do it. Then we have this coming up. This is the most expressive part of a dog's eye. You really tell stories about volumes about how they're feeling. Come in here like so. People need to see pictures of wildlife. People need to see good wildlife. Wildlife that is, um, or animals, that's uh, accurate and that that's just uh, painted, painted with observation. The power of observation is what's going to make the difference between a good wildlife painter and one that's just not really interested in I think so much the subject is and I'm not, I'm not really sure what what that would be but the powers of observation are paramount in all art but especially the wildlife because the people who buy wildlife know what they're looking for okay we'll go back over here to this to the eye we'll come down in there, and got this area here. I'm just saying areas and shapes, because I'm not thinking about what it is. I don't want to think about what it is. If I had turned it upright, I'd be looking at other parts of the dog, and I would be losing my focus from what I need to get done, and don't really want that to happen, so, um, and lose the configuration of the dog itself. And I'll show you, the one thing about this is even after you get the whole thing painted, you can still go back to that glaze thing and bring in whatever you need to bring in. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back down to the bottom. We're going to be real quick about that. And then come back up. Got a little bit of... of yellow in there, but that's all right. Okay, then we'll go back down to this area, the body of the dog, and now this is where we really want to kind of get the fur, the lay of the fur. I keep wanting to say lay of the land because it's kind of how I feel. And then it comes around like so, and then starts to be a part of the dog. Let's pull this back up here. And now this down here. Now this is um, going to be the, the undercoat for the final lights, because those are going to be the, the lights that just, that'll be kind of showing where the light is reflecting. But also the final coat of, of fur, and also with a golden retriever, the fur is every, their coats are, are waterproof. So there's a it's very very thick but very soft, and it's just that's what you wanna you wanna give that sense of soft thick fur in this particular piece. And I'm turning my brush around all kinds of ways because I really want to want to get that sense of curvature to the fur. 
and thickness, which the acrylics can certainly help you do. Now, as I add more water, you can see it's more transparent, but, um, but as it dries, it kind of makes a wonderful layered effect. All right, so we're coming in now. I might want to get a different brush, or might not. Let's see, because the retarder really helps. Just kind of get it back in there. Ooh, that's a lot lighter. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a lot lighter. <clears throat> And go around to this side here. I um, wonder what would happen if I went back over to this brush here that has blue in it and has green fur. I think I'll rinse it out a little bit. Okay. So, and actually the blue, I kind of, it's no problem. Okay. So what you can do when you finish this up you could go through, glaze the whole thing, and just continue to add more body to it and more, more depth to it. There's just, there's just so many things you can do, and it just depends on how far you want to carry the piece. Um, this is to give you a, a good road map to let you know how far you can carry the piece. Now it's a matter of getting the right darks, against the right lights and a little I think I'll go ahead and do a little bit of that glazing thing uh, with the right color that would be fine really really wet just kinda put it in there like so makes a nice blending okay we, we do want to keep some of those areas separated though. Have some good division. Okay, so what we're doing is getting this thing ready for the final for the final lights, which we just lay on top. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to glaze with the acrylic to pull it all together. And, and then we'll be ready. So as long as we can tell the different shapes within the head, we've done a good job. That's the main thing. And that's what we want to do now. Let's pull it all together. And everything has built on everything else. The, the drawing has allowed us to build up the all of the specific, the, sh the nose and the mouth and et cetera, but also the body and the volume within the, the coat. So we'll just come in like that. And it's just starting to smooth out. It is not an overnight process. It's not a quick fix. You got to really like what you're doing. Um, okay, now what? Let's go ahead now and um, uh, go for the light, and then the very final lights on the dog that are next to the blue. We can put in at the very end, but. Let's clean off the tip of that brush. I think I'm back to my number. Oh, this is a number eight. This is an American Journey number eight. So this is the first time I've used this one, I think. Um, all right. Want to make sure we have it light enough that this fur is going to sit on top of the other like we want it to. But we want to keep it 
the integrity of the color there. So you don't want it to be white just because it's white. You want it to be have some have some color to it. All right. So we've got some great big old clumps of fur. Let's just go ahead, do our final little thin. You can be just really, really um, forthright about this. Make some very nice brush strokes. Got a little light area here. Just work back into that. Bigger clumps around the, the base of the neck. And then this. And then we've got, let's see. The darks, the lights coming together. More contrast. Always nice to have good contrast. Um, now we're coming into this. It's always kind of exciting to get near the end of a painting because then you can actually see what it is you've been doing. Once again, have to keep going with the brush back to add more of the medium because it just gets so um, thick as it's drying that it's kind of hard to, to keep it under control. Okay, so this light color is we want this to be very light under here, and because that's one of our lightest places. So we just want to be real careful to make sure we have that stated and come around like so. Uh, we might have to even darken that. We'll see the other part. Now, um, it's coming in here underneath the chin. Then let's come around the, the smile. Now, I might decide to change brushes because this the tip of this brush is a little different to work with. Obviously, something's keeping me with it, so. Okay, so now all this here is going to be lighter. So I'm just kind of using the side of the brush and moving it up and down. And the side of the face up into the eye. And where the temple is. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to do is just use the side of the brush. And then right here, I'm going to pull this out some. And then kind of model this on up underneath the nose. Wet it some more. So we're sort of glazing, but we're glazing in very small increments. It's the same basic principle. So we've scumbled, we've glazed, and we've done some, a little bit of impasto, impasto, however you want to say it, work. Coming around the nose, and then here again, and then here, Getting a little bit wider with the brush, going up the temple, and a little nodule there, going around like so. This is actually the sheen. We're creating the sheen on the dog's head, and so come around to the eyelid and then this
coming around the eye, kind of sort of goes down this way, and over the top of the head. So this is just the final part coming in for the home stretch. So many different planes and angles to be working with. Um, just want to keep your eye on what's where the lightest lights are. Coming around here again. And up in here. And just working away on down. And then go over here to the ear. And well, that got really thick, but that's okay because that's kind of where we are now. Coming around the edge of the ear and and then over here. Then we just need to take a look and adjust. Got some real light stuff going on here. Okay, and a little bit here. Now it gets kind of not really sure. All right, now let's look at it. Oh, okay. Well, it's amazing. When you look at it right side up, what, what it was you did and how you did that. Okay, so let's just get these final things done. Get the background on. Get the final lights. I think we'll have it. We'll be at our last section.